she beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot. What's up? What's going on, my good people? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Pull up a seat. Hope you enjoyed the content. And before we get into this video, I want to ask that you like, comment, share, subscribe. Go ahead and tap that bell while you're at it so you're notified. Anytime I drop a brand new video, go live or schedule a premiere. All right, y'all. Today, I'm eating a gigantic salad with lots of good stuff in it. It's topped with blue cheese. I'm going to tell you everything that's in it, I promise, after I take a couple of bites. All right, so let's get it. I guess I can tell y'all what's in the salad while I'm mixing this dressing around. All right, romaine lettuce. We got red onions, cherry tomatoes, jalapenos, cucumbers, feta cheese, boiled eggs, bacon. Y'all, I'm excited. I've been eating this salad for the last like four days. I've been eating this salad every single day, every single day. y'all a bite for all my salad lovers when i went to the store i knew i should have got me some more romaine lettuce because i knew i was gonna go through it fast How time is it? It's, mm, it's one o'clock. It's my first meal of the day. Mm, mm, mm. Did I tell you what kind of dressing? I got blue cheese dressing on here, y'all. I love blue cheese so much. So today is Tuesday. I've been home for a little over a week. And y'all, my time home has been nice. It's been pretty chill. I really feel like I'm on, like obviously my home doesn't feel like, this still feels like home, let me say that. But I've just been, I've been chilling. Like I haven't been recording a whole lot. And I think that that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I've been laying down a lot. I've been resting. I've been watching TV. I've been watching movies. I've been reading, listening to audiobooks. I've been doing a lot of chilling and relaxing, and it's been nice. It has been. It's so funny. A few of y'all had asked me about my godson recently and he was in when i did like my going away party slash birthday celebration he was there but i don't think he was in the vlog a whole lot but i'm gonna see him soon y'all i'm so excited i cannot wait to see him and catch up with him and give him a hug and all that good stuff i am so excited i can't wait to see him love 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 my godson so much so shout out to my godson It's just so interesting seeing somebody have their own life, you know, after you watch them grow up and you see them, like you see their personality developing when they're younger and what kind of music they like and how they like to dress. And it's like, now he's a grown man making his own decisions, you know? He's doing such a good job.
this Friday, I have an appointment with my therapist and I cannot wait to see her. When I was getting ready for the video, I was like, damn, I miss my therapist. So we were supposed to, our, our, we meet every two weeks. So on the 16th, she had stuff going on, like some training going on. And then I was traveling to Vegas. So we were like, all right, we're going to meet on the 30th. So I haven't, you know, just like skipping a session. I don't know. I can really feel it. You know, I don't feel like I'm going through a crisis or anything. It's just that I miss her. I miss our conversation and time together. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing her. And because we missed two weeks, oh, baby, I got a lot to talk about. I do. What I need to do is actually write down the things I want to talk about because it's a lot. It's so interesting how you feel like a lot isn't going on, but a lot is always happening. It really, really is. A lot is always happening around us. Um, a lot is happening inside of us. You know what I'm saying? So I really got to write down my notes of the things that I really want to talk to her about. And also, too, I need to revisit this book. She had told me about this book. It's called... I might be saying it wrong. It's like the body keeps score or something like that. I found it online. I found a PDF version of it online. And I need to go and read this chapter. I really wanted, I, it's this chapter I really, really wanted to read. Um, but anyway, in our last session, we, I was talking and we were talking about like trauma and how trauma shows up in our body and how it's stored and you know like there's these different things you can do to release it you know um trauma can affect all of us differently and like i said we store it in our body in different types of ways in different parts of our body so she had recommended this book and i was reading some of it but it's this chapter i want to read before i see her so yeah y'all i'm hype about therapy i am mm. And anybody out there, if you're in therapy, how are your sessions going? I hope yours are going well. I hope you have found a therapist is a good fit. And I hope that, you know, your therapist is, you know, meeting your needs. And that you feel like, you know, that you have clarity on certain stuff or that you, you know, have coping mechanisms towards other things or whatever it is that you've been experiencing. Um, but yeah, therapy has been dope. It has been. And the time has gone by really fast. Because me and her have been working together since October, November of last year. And I told y'all before how hard it was to find a therapist. And it's like, man, we are locked in. And I'm just so happy to be on this other side of just having a person who plays a significant role um, as it relates to my wellness and my well-being. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I love my therapist. When I get back, I'm going to definitely go see her in person. I'm going to go see her in person so I can soak up more. You know, the energy and the vibe is different in person. So I want that. So have y'all watched The Perfect Find on Netflix? It's a romantic comedy. Uh, with Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union is in it. Keith Powers. Gina Torres is in it. Lala. Aisha Hines. It was good. It was actually really, really good. Um, if you're looking for something to watch, I think you should watch it. I would give it an eight and a half out of ten. Um... I like the overall story. The music was incredible. Like the music was so good, y'all. There were a few songs that really just took me back. I'm like, damn, I ain't heard this in a minute. Like, okay. Like, yeah, they went they went in on the music. The costume design, the costumes, like the wardrobe, amazing. Um, it was good. I really I mean I enjoyed it. I did. I really enjoyed it from beginning to end. It was a really good movie. I really enjoyed the love story and the dynamic between 
Keith Powers character Eric and Gabrielle Union's character Jenna so they ended up working together and Jenna she's rock bottom you know just trying to kind of resurface after going through a breakup and anyway her and Eric end up you know having a thing for each other so I like the dynamic of an older woman and a younger man. I know that can be really complicated to navigate when you have that big age gap. And I'm going to say in the film, there was at least a 15 year age difference. He was a recent college grad and she was 40. So, you know, I think that it's really easy to get caught up in how you think somebody in their 20s is going to be or how you think somebody in their 40s is going to be. But I, I don't know. I like the way everything played out between them. And one of the things I enjoyed most was Eric, like Keith Powers, the way that his character displayed emotional intelligence. I feel like that he did a really good job, like being vulnerable and like having boundaries. Um, there was a scene in the park where, you know, he just made the, a, a very mature decision. You know what I'm saying? That you may not, people may not expect from a 20 something year old, a 20 something year old. You know what I mean? So I think he carried himself well. He was confident and he just genuinely liked Jenna it wasn't about her trying to parent him you know which I know can be the reason sometimes that people end up with people that are older um it could be a parenting thing like you want to be and you're, you're used to being parented in a relationship it could be from childhood or it could be from other things that kind of spark that but that wasn't his intent so I really love the way that he just pursued her because he was just genuinely interested in her he had no idea who she was you know because she was a big deal in her industry before she kind of like took a year off because she went through some stuff or whatever. But yeah, like I like the way that his character was portrayed. You know, he didn't come off like a, I feel like I've seen stories where 20 something year olds come off very thirsty, um, you know, and kind of all over the place. And he wasn't like, he was really about his craft as a filmmaker. And um, yeah, so it was a good story. It was good. So if you haven't seen it, I think you should check it out. I think you'll enjoy the music. It goes by really fast. It was probably like an hour and a half long, but it's a very easy watch. Um, so yeah, it was good. So if you've been looking for something to watch or you've been debating on if you should, you know, take the time to sit and watch, I say absolutely go for it again. I give it about an eight and a half out of 10. I took that last little bite. That was so satisfying. I'm about to go to the store again to get everything else that I need. What else did I run out of? I pretty much have everything else still, but I might give me some more tomatoes. Oh, you know, the one thing I need to is some avocado. I would, I wish I had avocado. That's the one thing I did not have. So yeah, I'm gonna make a store run so I can keep on eating this salad every day. All right, so I wanted to share my experience flying for the first time since that traumatic experience I had back in March, y'all. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will put a link um, up above for you to go back and watch that story time. Um, but a quick recap, my mom and I had a very traumatic experience. Not even just me and my mom. Everybody on the plane had a traumatic experience uh, when we flew into Columbus, March 25th. Um, Y'all, it was a very windy day um, to the point that when the pilot tried to land, he could not land successfully or safely. So he had to go right back up into the sky. And it's just, it was very scary, scary because as we were coming down, the plane was tilting like very, very heavy, 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 like very heavy back and forth. And we almost got knocked off the runway because the wind was that strong. And so he had to go back up in the air and come back around and try to land a second time. And we did make it the second time, but it was very scary because, you know, it's mother nature. Like the, the, the pilot can't control the wind. The pilot can only make, you know, his decisions using his judgment and what he thinks is best and what he's learned. You know what I'm saying? But there's some things you just can't control. And with it being so windy, anything could have flew into the propeller on the plane, caused a fire. Just anything could have happened is all I'm saying. And it was very scary. And it's a, it's a different experience being on a plane with everybody screaming and being on the edge of their seats. And, you know, because like you have your own internal fears, but then experiencing other people's fear at the same time is a lot like oh my goodness i would never forget this moment so i said all that to say and that's a quick recap of the last time i flew in march um so I, you know this was going to be so me and my honey we have taken a lot of road trips together but we have never flown together so i was really excited about us taking our first flight together um so as the flight is our you know day is approaching we leaving we flew out on a friday 
Um, I wasn't nervous. I didn't even really think about me having PTSD, me feeling triggered, me being afraid. I didn't, I didn't have nerves, anything. I, I felt fine. Like I was excited about us having our first flight together, seeing my family. I was thinking about all the things that were to come. So our flight left at about mm, like three something in the afternoon. So we get there, you know, two hours early. We were in the airport chilling, talking, charging our devices. It's time to fly out. We, you know, board our plane. Very smooth process. I got my aisle seat. Um, I love the aisle seat because I re it's really important for me to stand up. I like to stand up and stretch my legs while I'm flying. Um, so I always choose an aisle seat. She sat in the middle. And I remember the pilot came on, you know, before takeoff and was telling us, you know, hey, the flight is going to be three hours and 48 minutes. Um, you know, it's a little windy in Vegas, but we're going to hit severe turbulence in about the maybe once we get through the first two hours of the flight, we're going to hit severe turbulence in Colorado over the Rockies. So I think hearing him say that I felt this little like this nervous sensation in my stomach, you know. And I was like, okay, like, you know, all right, like, Rhonda, we can do this. We're going to be good, you know. So I felt the nervous sensation, but it kind of came and went. And just as the pilot said, the first two hours of the flight were very, very smooth. Smooth sailing, right? And so just as he said, we were going to hit some turbulence. So we hit the turbulence, and it wasn't as bad as he said it would be. So maybe things kind of calmed, things like calmed down a bit before we, you know, as we were approaching Colorado, uh, but it wasn't bad. But even if, even though it wasn't bad, I had knots in my stomach. I kind of feel like I was like sweaty, but I like my body wasn't sweating, but my hands were. But it felt like my body was sweating, but it wasn't. But but my hands were like really, really like clammy. My heart was beating really fast. And whenever the turbulence happened, like I just was okay. I remember one of the first things I did. I have this playlist on Spotify, it's called Peaceful Mind. And it's full of all these like songs and like instrumentals and stuff that I listen to when I meditate. So that's the first thing I did was to try to get my mind under control because I'm like, if I get my mind under control, my body will follow. So I'm like, I put this, you know, meditation music on. I'm taking deep breaths. Mind y'all this whole time, y'all, I haven't said anything to my honey at all. And she's like, you know, we both got our AirPods on. She's watching what she's watching, listening to music, doing her thing. I'm doing my thing, right? So I haven't said anything, but I'm trying to do these exercises, trying to get through this, how I'm feeling, right? Because I'm like, I don't want to feel like this for the rest of the flight. We still had over an hour to go. So I'm calming myself down and I calm, I calm down. We hit some more turbulence. My body stiffs up, like I stiffen up real quick. And I'm like, oh, like my stomach is turning, heart is racing. Because all I can do is just go back to that moment of like what it felt like when we were about to land and when it felt like we we're falling out of the sky. That's all I can think about. You know, granted, I know that turbulence cannot make a, a plane fall out of the sky, but just that, that experience in March just, y'all, it just did something to me. So anyways, turbulence is back. And now at this point, I find myself just flipping back and forth in between different things. Like I'm, I'm doing like three minutes of a podcast, four minutes of music, five minutes of a TV show, three minutes of a movie. Like I'm just switching back and forth flipping to different things, hearing different voices to calm my nerves, you know? So then at one point, my honey reaches out just to grab my hand. She wasn't nervous or anything. She's like, I said, doing her thing, chilling. She reaches to grab my hand and she grabs it and my hand is clammy. She looks and she's like, your hand is clammy, you okay? And I was like, babe, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm really nervous. Like with this being my first flight since March, like I, I, I didn't think I would feel like this. And she's like, why you didn't say nothing? I'm like, cause I just been trying to like, you know, Use the things that I've learned in therapy, trying to manage and regulate myself. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I could have very well been on that flight by myself. And I felt like that was a great time for me to try to manage it myself. You know what I mean? But she was just like, you know, she's rubbing my back. She was like, are you okay? Like, we could talk. You know, what do you need? And so she was there for me and all that stuff, right? And so now we're getting to the point where it's time to land. And y'all, I'm really, I'm really feeling it now. Like, I'm telling, I'm telling my honey, like, honey, like, I... Like, like, I like part of me wanted to just like throw up. Like, I just wanted to vomit because I'm like, I just felt so sick about the landing, you know. And if anybody knows, y'all know about flying. The most difficult parts of flying, most complicated are takeoff and landing, right? Because a lot of things can happen during that, those times, you know, those transitions of taking off and landing. So anyways, it's time to land. We're descending. We're, you know, getting, I'm seeing, you know, it's getting closer and closer, you know, to the runway. And it, I, I'm starting to play the, you know, the March flight is like, 
blurring and interfering with my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? And so, y'all, the landing was smooth, completely smooth. Obviously, nobody had to clap or anything once we landed because it was just a regular landing. But I found myself just like being like, whoo, whoo, you know, and I'm just like, oh, my God, like, oh, my God. Like, I just was sitting there. Part of me wanted to cry. My Like, my eyes were like, I was tearing up. And I don't know if it was just thinking like, damn, I'm glad things didn't go left in March. I don't, I don't even know. Just a lot of things were just in my mind, y'all. And um, I like, you know, seeing my mom's face and how she was feeling and the tears in her eyes and just y'all, it was just a lot. So I'm, re I'm replaying all these things as I'm landing and, and everybody is just now, you know, getting up and getting their bags and stuff. But I feel like I'm in kind of like slow motion. It's like an outer body experience. And so we get off the airplane and I kind of snap out of it and I'm good, you know, whatever. We get our bags and everything's fine. So we're in Vegas and it's windy the entire time in Vegas. Um, and I hadn't really thought about the wind. You know, the wind was kind of like, it was helping because like it was 95 one day, but because of the wind, it probably felt like 70, like the like high 70s, low 80s. So the wind was helpful in that way. Now, the last day we're there, still windy, windy the entire time. I'm looking at the forecast. Wind is just in the forecast for the rest of the day. A part of me was like, I might need to drive home. I might need to just to hell with this flight because I'm thinking about how I felt when we flew in. And the wind, because again, the wind is like a, a trigger for me for sure because of like, you know, what I, what, how it was in March. Now, the wind wasn't nearly as bad as it was in March, but it was still pretty, it was windy, you know. Y'all, I started looking at rental cars. I haven't said anything to anybody about me, about me driving home. I'm just, this is just me online looking at rental cars. I'm like, I can go ahead and make this drive. I'm going to pick up a car. It, it, like right now, at that time when I pulled it up. This was on the 19th on Monday, so I figured it was going to be a lot of traffic going back, but it was like a three and a half hour drive, three and a half, four, four hour drive max. I'm like, that ain't nothing. I can punch that easy. Forget it. I can just to hell with that ticket. I can eat that up. No big deal. Rent this car. Take this drive back home. So I tell my honey, I'm like, I'm thinking about driving home. She's like, what? She was like, are, are you are you serious? I'm like, I don't know. Then I was like, nah, like, I mean, my parents are preparing to come pick me up at, you know, the Orange County Airport. The flight, obviously, is going to be a lot quicker. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, okay, forget it. I'm going to go through with the flight, right? Because, again, the wind was, like, making me feel some kind of way. And it was not, it, was, it wasn't nearly as windy as it was that day we flew in March. But still, the wind just made me feel some kind of way. So we get to the airport. And now my honey was going to Columbus. Her flight didn't leave till, like, almost 11 o'clock at night. My flight left at, like, 8 something, like, 8, 15, 8, 30 p.m. But we decided to go to the airport together because we wanted to sit there and hang out until we couldn't hang out together anymore right so we in there chilling i'm still looking at the weather i'm like man it's still windy okay so it's now time for me to board my plane so i got my aisle seat and it's a pretty packed flight the pilot comes on and is like this is going to be a very short flight 40 minutes he's like our takeoff is going to be rocky um you're probably it's going to be some turbulence it's going to be some shaking back and forth on the plane because it's windy and I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm just thinking like, should I get off the plane? Like, y'all, like my heart is jumping out of my chest. I'm like, oh my God. So I put my peaceful mind playlist on. I'm breathing through it. I'm breathing through it. Rhonda, this is going to be fine. Planes have been taking off all day long. You are going to be fine. This pilot is going to get us where we need to go. Like, you know, like I'm just talking, I'm just saying all these things to get myself to believe that everything is going to be okay. Right. So sure enough, I'll take off, y'all. I'm my heart is racing, my stomach is in knots. Okay, like, uh, like I could just, uh, I, I don't even know, y'all. During takeoff, this is definitely the rockiest takeoff I've ever had, for sure. The rockiest because again, it was windy out the gate. The difference was in March, it wasn't windy when we took off. It was windy when we finally made it to Columbus. It wasn't windy in California. So it's windy on takeoff. So you know, we we kind of rocking back and forth a little bit, you know, but. You know, the pilot is doing a great job, just kind of like navigating everything and doing what needs to be done to get us, you know, to the altitude we got to get to. We get to our altitude and it's just, I mean, it's just turbulence kind of throughout the flight. And all I kept on thinking was like, thank God it's only 40 minutes, you know, because I couldn't imagine if I was flying all the way back to Columbus, which is about a four, four, and, about a four and a half hour flight. I couldn't imagine if I was doing four and a half hours. All I had was 40 minutes in me. So y'all, my eyes is just like this the entire time. I'm just looking. I felt like my eyes was like this, like the entire flight, y'all, for real. And I'm uh, at this point, I'm breathing 
through everything, but I'm also just kind of flipping back and forth in between music, TV, audio books. I'm just flipping back and forth because hearing different voices, different people talking at different paces, hearing a woman's voice, hearing a man's voice, hearing these things flipping back and forth is like calming me down, right? So we land as, you know, the landing was smooth. No issues at all. I still felt extremely nervous during landing. Um, my heart was like racing very, very fast during landing and land, landed safely. No problem at all. And I was definitely breathing a little kind of heavy while we were, you know, going like as we were landing, my breathing had picked up a little bit. So I'm like, yo, like I really have PTSD. Like this is really an issue. Like this is really still bothering me. My body is responding to it. I feel like I couldn't control the way my body was responding to it. Um, and you know, I was talking to my honey about it. One of the only, the only thing I could really do is continue to just fly through it. That's it. All I can do is continue to fly through it. Like, cause I, at the end of the day, I'm not afraid to fly. Like, I don't feel like I'm afraid to fly to get on the plane. I don't feel that way at all. It's just certain things that happen. You know what I'm saying? That kind of trigger me and take me back to what happened in March. You feel me? So I'm going to continue to fly through it. I have a couple flights planned out this year. One thing that's really been helping me a lot, y'all, is since I've been back home, there's this, um, this pilot. His channel name is My Layover Life. He has incredible content though it's shot beautifully aesthetically it's beautiful the editing is great he's a pilot that talks a lot about like different hacks and stuff like that but he really shows you the life of a pilot and i think just seeing the pilot and not it being all about turbulence or things happening on a plane like you know things that can scare people and stuff like that seeing the other side of just like how highly skilled a pilot is just gives me some type of peace. I don't know what it is, but I mean, and, and obviously I know that like pilots have to be highly skilled to do what they do. Like they have to make these, they make so many decisions, you know what I'm saying? From point A to point B, no matter how long the flight is, but seeing him in his everyday life and like seeing him prepare for like layovers and what he does with his time is bringing me some kind of peace y'all and it's helping. So this is definitely one of the things I'm gonna have to talk to my therapist about um and continue to work through this you know to continue to work through it it's very interesting because i'm sure this isn't the first time i've had ptsd in my life but this is the first time i've been able to call it what it is i know exactly what it stems from i know exactly when this feeling started so i'm able to really pinpoint things now i will say that i am very proud of myself for trying to work through it you know like i said like i could have easily just like like honey i'm feeling some kind of way and just grab her hand but would that have helped? Maybe it would have, but I really wanted to depend on myself because again, I could have been on that flight alone and all I would have had was myself to get through it, you know, to calm my nerves. So I am proud of myself for breathing through it and finding things to help me through those, like those moments. Cause the thing about it is I wasn't anxious the entire flight. It was just like the landing, the takeoff, turbulence, not, and not even all of the turbulence, you know what I'm saying? Not all of it. It was just certain ways that I felt during those pockets of turbulence you know what i'm saying like the way the turbulence felt or the way that it kind of hit would would make me like you know feel some kind of way so yeah y'all i'm going through it but i'm gonna get through it that's the thing so i wanted to share that is like i'm on the edge of my seat right now i'm not excited about flying i'm not scared to fly but i'm not excited about it um <clears throat> and we'll see like maybe between me watching that pilot's youtube channel knowing the things that helped me during my flights that I just recently had and talking to my therapist before I have my next flight back to Ohio, that it'll probably be a better trip for me. So I'll let y'all know, but man, y'all, my stomach, baby, Whew, ain't nothing like the nerves. You know what I'm saying? Those nerves just really get to you and your stomach is just, I don't, oh my goodness. Like my stomach was just in a knot and just like throbbing. So I want to share it. I want to share that with y'all. Like I'm, I'm going through it, y'all. I am, but like I said, I'm going through it, but I'm gonna get through it. And that, and I really feel like that's going to be the case, you know, because I mean, I want to see the world. There's so many places that I want to go. So I have to get over this. I want to get over it. You know, like I don't want to just feel stuck in this place of not enjoying a flight. You know what I'm saying? Because prior to this, like I've been flying with no problem. You know, y'all have seen me, y'all been here. I've been going back and forth to Ohio for a while. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. 
I know it'll be okay. But anyways, that's the video, y'all. Um, if you watched um, The Perfect Fine, let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you loved about it. Did you enjoy the music, the acting? What is it? What did you enjoy? Um, yeah, so I appreciate y'all watching. Make the best of the day, y'all. Be good to yourself. Peace. I be beaming, I be booming down that block. Down that block. Everywhere you go, you know they know I'm hot.